This video will provide detailed instructions for the Biofields Lab. Before you start watching this, you have to make sure that you have completed the three tasks listed here. Number one, you have to complete the Biofields soft chalk on your D2L shelf. Number two, you have to read the Biofields PowerPoint provided or watch the PowerPoint videos. Um, and number three, you will need to read the Biofields lab. The lab will look something like this. It will give you background information about different uh, terms, for example, biomass, cellulosic biomass, cellulase, and all these information that you need to do the lab. So you have to read the introduction, do the soft chalk, right? You already should have done that. And in the lab, there's detailed instruction on how to do different parts of the lab. For example, part one is experimental design. So here we'll give you information on how to um, do the first three pages of the data sheets. So it gives you information on different terms and also remind you of the goal of this lab, which is to make as much alcohol as possible from cellulosic biomass, which is once again is defined in the introduction of the lab, or you can find it in the biofuels PowerPoint. Okay, so you should read through all of this. And the lab, even though you're not actually doing the lab, you should read through the lab so to know each steps that are involved. So when you go to the data sheet here, here is the first part is experimental design. So the first three questions, um, let's start with question number one. Question number one asking you what is cellulose, what is it made of? The information that you need for question one is in the lab, the first page of the lab, in the introduction, or in the Biofuse PowerPoint. So you can find answers for question one from those two places. Number two is asking you to identify a few types of cellulosic biomass. Now we're talking about the parts of plants that usually is, you know, people don't eat it, like banana peels, avocado skin, stuff like this that people usually throw away, but they are actually contain a lot of cellulosic biomass in there, okay? Um, just to remind you quickly, cellulosic biomass is plant biomass that contain a lot of cellulose. We're interested in cellulose because cellulose contain a lot of glucose, okay? So this is, you just think about a few different items, plant parts in your daily life that you usually throw away, but it's perfectly good. Now, part three, you'll use the internet to do some research on these four enzymes, okay? So what you need to find is uh, the substrate for each one of these enzymes. For example, for cellulase, you will write something like cellulase breaks down uh, cellulose, which is the enzyme uh, in, well, sorry, which is the substrate. So let's do it again. The enzyme cellulase will break down the substrate cellulose into glucose, which is the product. So because this question is asking about the substrate and the product for each one of these enzymes. So you state the substrate in this case is cellulose for cellulase, and then cellulase will turn cellulose into glucose. Okay, so for each one of these, you do that. So that after you answer the first three questions, now when you finish the first three, the, these three tasks here, you have enough background information to do the first part of the lab, which is design. Okay, now once again, the lab goal is to make as much alcohol as possible by picking a biomass and enzymes, okay? And so the two things that you can change or uh, you have a choice of in this lab is what kind of biomass that you want to use and what enzymes you want to use. And the enzymes are these four here, cellulase, amylase, pectinase, and protease, which is the same as this here. You see that? So after you've done research on this, it will help you with the rest of the lab to design your lab, uh, to design your experiment. So just a quick review. Um, when you um, 
do the when you produce when you try to produce biofuels, there's three steps. Three steps are involved. For example, you have to t boil the biomass first, and after you boil biomass, then you can use that to um, for enzyme digestion. In this step, it will release the glucose from the biomass, and then the glucose is used by yeast in fermentation. First step is boiling. You basically like cooking. Um, the biomass, just like what, how we will cook vegetables. It's the same way when we cook vegetables, they become softer, easier to digest, right? So it's the same thing when we cook the biomass, we're loosening up the cell wall in the plant cells. So then it will make the second step, which is enzyme digestion, a lot easier. So in enzyme digestion, this is to remind you, we're looking at plant biomass. So we have plant cells involved, and each plant cell have a plant cell wall, which has a lot of cellulose in it. And cellulose, if you have forgotten already, is a polysaccharide. It's a chain of glucose. So each one of these green hexagons is glucose. So it's a chain, right? So in this step, in enzyme digestion, you have an enzyme of choice to try to cut or digest the cellulose up so it will release individual glucose. And this glucose then can be used, glucose here, can be used by yeast to turn it into alcohol. So these are the three major steps. And here are your options. Since you're not actually going to do the lab physically, so we have five choices for you. So your job is to figure out, look at these choices and do some research on the internet to figure out which one of these options will give you the most alcohol okay and so you have to do some digging on these biomass right and you already have done the research on the enzymes anyway so you know which enzyme will work best on which biomass and that's the reason why you need to get number three answer really well because that will help you to pick the best option that will allow you to make the most ethanol okay so once you pick an option then you can go on and answer number four so number four is asking you to come up with a research question for example if I pick um, let's say I pick coffee option number four I think that this option will give me the most alcohol based on the enzyme. I, you know, based what, based on what I understand about the enzyme cellulase and pectinase, and also what I understand or what I know about coffee grounds. So let's say I pick um, option number four. So then, how do I answer this question here? So what you're gonna say is, let's say my question is, since I'm using two different enzymes, I would say does cellulase or pectinase make more alcohol with coffee grounds okay so that's my question um, and then that was they already uh, stated my biomass and enzyme so the hypothesis is let's say I believe that um, so I say cellulase will make more alcohol so that's supposed to be the educated guess to the question that you have so that's my guess. I guess that um, cellulase enzyme will make more alcohol from coffee grinds. So that's what you're supposed to do for number four. And number five, you need to explain why um, you think, um, for me, it will be, I would have to explain why I think cellulase will make more alcohol than pectinase. Okay, and this is also based on the research you're supposed to have done for number three. And the research you're supposed to have done to figure out the best option from here, right? So for me, I can say, well, I think um, cellulase will give me more alcohol because coffee grind is mostly cellulose. It doesn't have much pectin. Um, and that's the reason. It doesn't have to be too complicated, but has to be um, backed up by facts, okay? So next, based on the hypothesis, you write a prediction. Now let's talk about number four, which is the control groups. Okay. <clears throat> so
So here is the experimental design control groups. This is a generic setup for the experiment. In general, the control group should be um, should contain the biomass with buffer. The only thing that's missing in this control group is enzyme. And the experimental group is um, biomass with everything and the enzyme. So the purpose of the control group is to compare um, with enzyme or without enzyme to see whether the enzyme digestion is really working. Okay. So here is a, a specific example. Remember I was using coffee grinds. Okay, so if I want to use option number four for coffee grinds, the way I would set up the experiment is I'll have a control which has my coffee grind and everything else except the enzyme. And for my experimental groups, I'll have um, coffee grind with cellulase or I'll have another tube coffee grind with pectinase. So this way I can compare these two enzymes to each other and I can also compare the enzyme with the control group that doesn't have enzyme. So I will know that whether the enzyme work well or not in digesting the cellulose in coffee grinds, right? So here's another example. Now in this example I have um, showing you here is the first option when you use corn cob versus corn husk. So with this example, I'm using two different biomass. The last example I have, I use two different enzymes, right? So let's look at how, what, what happened if you use two different biomass. So the control is the same. You always have no enzyme in it. But in this scenario, you have two different biomass. For one tube, you have the corn cob without enzyme. The second tube of the control, your corn husk with no enzyme. The experimental group is just the same setup except you add enzyme to it. In this case, cob with cellulase, husk with cellulase. Okay, so that way you can come you can compare this group with the no enzyme group to see how well the enzyme digestion works. And you can compare this group, the husk group, uh, with enzyme to the one without enzyme to see how well the enzyme cellulase work on the corn husk. So can you see that? So now let's go back and look at the lab. So this is what the control group supposed to be, is um, the, the tube without the enzyme. And I already mentioned why it's important, because you can compare it with the enzyme group to see how well the enzyme digestion works. Now, number five and six is what you expect, right? So you need to um watch the video on the powerpoint and then so you know what to expect what do you expect after enzyme digestion what do you expect after fermentation okay so this is asking you about glucose here in this question at which state remember we have three three steps in biofuel production after which step do you expect to have the highest glucose level same thing here, we have three steps. Which step would you expect to have the highest alcohol? Okay, based on your understanding on each one of these steps, it will help you to decide which step will have the highest glucose or alcohol. Okay, so once you answer these first six questions, you can use the answers from those first six questions to fill out this table. Of course, you have your research question, you have your hypothesis already. Now, what will, for example, in, if I pick the options um, using coffee grinds, right? So my, my uh, independent variable will be the two different enzymes because that is going to change dependent. So I will put down my independent variable is pectinase versus cellulase. My dependent variable will be what? Glucose level, right? Because that will change based on what enzyme I use and ethanol le level. So that will change based on the enzyme I use too. So the control variables you, is three things that you keep the same between control and experimental group. For example, in my case, if I pick coffee grinds, 
I use the same coffee grinds for all my experiments. That's one. I use the same amount of uh, buffer, right? Number two. Number three is I can say I use the same amount of coffee grinds in each tube also. So those are the control var variables that what I uh, keep the same between the control groups and the experimental groups. Now here is, of course, you know my experimental group already gave you an example, will be um, pectinase, you know, one tube with pectinase, one tube with cellulase, plus the coffee grinds, right? The control group will be coffee grinds with no enzymes. So that will be what it looks like. This, you can find it from the top again, so you fill out this table. Once you've done the first three pages of here of the data sheet, the after you've done the first three pages of the data sheet, which contain all the design question, you should email that to your teacher. And based on what your option, the, based on the option that you pick, she or he will email you back this data table. Okay, and then you'll use the data table that with all the numbers. And by the way, those numbers are from previous semesters, student lab data. So it's real data. So you can use, so that's why we have it. And, and then you can use it and use that data to, to do two graphs. Use Excel to do two graphs. One, I'll show you now in here. You use those data from your instructor to do two graphs like this. One is for the glucose level. One is for the alcohol concentration. Okay, and your x-axis with the three treatments or the three steps I mentioned. And then you will plot what the, um, what the glucose level is after each step. And you can see that in this case, I have one with cellulase only, and then I have one with two different enzymes, cellulase and amylase, and this is my control, which has no enzyme. Okay, and then you're supposed to have a title, your unit, right? So the y-axis is the glucose level or alcohol concentration, and the x-axis is your three steps here. And you're supposed to have a few lines, depends on how many conditions that you have. So this is what you're supposed to do for the graph after you receive the data from your instructor. And then using this data, you can also answer these questions. How does the glucose change or the alcohol level change after, after the enzyme digestion stage, right? Same question after fermentation. So once again, this question um, is based on this data that you receive from your instructor after you complete the first three pages of the design. Okay. Um, and then um, these two questions is just about conclusion about how you would do the lab better or um, what happened if you boil or not boil. So this is basically the whole lab and that's what you're supposed to do. Um, if you have any questions about the lab, you should contact your instructor and um, make sure you finish the experimental design part first. And once you finish that and turn in the first three um, pages, answer all the questions, then your instructor will give you your data. And this is a work file on your D2L. The lab supposed to be as a work file on your D2L. So you should be able to uh, type this up electronically and email it back to your instructor. Now, if you don't have Word on your computer, um, uh, Microsoft is free for farming students. So you can go on your eWolf or D2L and then go on to uh, get the free Microsoft Word Online to do this. Okay, so you download this on your computer um, and then um, you can type it up. So this is the end of the video explaining everything there is about this lab. Once again, if you have questions, go ask your instructor. Um, 
they'll be able to help you.